Hi, I'm with uh, Lindsay Parsons. Uh, her dad and I taught together at Thunder Ridge High School for many, many years. And Lindsay and I have a lot in common. Uh, <laughs> she went to Rappo High School, as, as did I, even though I graduated clear back in 19, a long time ago. <laughs> and Lindsay is now going to Colorado Mason University, and that's where I went after Rappaho. So we're both proud alums of Arapaho and soon to be proud alum because she's not quite done yet, but she will be of Almost. Colorado Mason University. So she's a MAV and we're both warriors and we're both MAVs. So we have a lot in common. And I want to take you through Lindsay's journey. Uh, she just got a big award for being on the cross country team at CMU and her journey from starting cross country at Arapaho all the way through where she is now with her purpose and her perspective and her passion. She's an awesome kid and we can't wait to get to hear her story. So Lindsay, glad to have you on the People Progressing. Um, Thank you for having me. Show. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome to have you on here and uh, to listen to your story here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your time at Arapaho and how you got started with cross country and, and what else you did there? All right, so I started running my freshman year of high school. Um, I was kind of forced into it by my parents and one of my really good friends. I did not want to do it. I thought running was kind of lame. <laughs> not lame, but it just seemed really hard, especially because I had never ran 5Ks before. Um, and I started off as one of the slowest runners on my team. There was like maybe 100 girls on the girls team. So that says something. I was very very slow <laughs> I think my first 5k ever I ran like almost 33 minutes so like that yeah that says something about where I started um but I had a lot of fun with it and it was the people that really kept me um like kept me there and made me want to come back um and so then after my freshman year I was like okay well I'm gonna do it again and I wanted to like keep trying and actually get better like I didn't have any big goals because I didn't know where this was going to take me but I was like well like this is what I do so like why not see what I'm capable of um and so by the time I got to my junior year I ended up being kind of on the varsity cusp um like anywhere from like the seventh to the ninth runner I ended up being the alternate for our state team my junior year and senior year and an alternate for state track my junior year and then my senior year, I finally got to run on the four by eight at state, which was super fun. That was like the only time I ever got to run at state. Um, but I improved a lot in high school. I got my 5K PR down to 2045. So I cut off like 12 minutes, which not a lot of people can say, I guess. Um, and then I decided I still wanted to have a team in like when I went to college. I still loved running so much. Um, so I figured like, why not try to find a school that I could run at? And I found Mesa, my stepmom went here. So that's how I found out about Mesa in the first place. Um, I toured it. I loved it. I loved the coaches. I love the team atmosphere. Um, and I kind of hit like a, I kind of took a step backwards my freshman year, which is typical in college. You're just trying to figure out what college athletics are like. Um, but then I had some really great upperclassmen teammates that pushed me and made me want to be better athletes. One of them, um, her name's Lauren, and she went to Arapaho also, which is kind of funny. There's a lot of Arapaho kids at Mesa. There we go. Uh, and she was amazing. She was like a national qualifier in track and cross country, and she just really inspired me. Um, and then this year, it was a little weird with COVID, but one of my other really good friends from Arapaho that I ran with ended up coming to Mesa and running with me too. Her name's Kira. Um, and we both ended up qualifying for the national invite, which was a replacement for NCAAs this year because everything was canceled. Um, and we both ended up making the national invite team, which was really, really cool. Yeah. That wasn't something I ever thought I'd be able to do, but <laughs> it's been like just seeing where I came from, like I got proud of myself, <laughs> which like, I don't know. It might be kind of cocky to say, but I am proud of myself. <laughs> no, you, you have every right to say that. And that's what, you know, that, that's as, as, as a coach, being an ex-coach, that's what I want all my players to say, right? 
I want I want all my players to say I'm proud of myself. You're yeah. proud of yourself for what you've accomplished, but you're more proud of yourself for all the hard work that you've done to accomplish what you've done. And that's where I want to kind of go with this. Going back to when you were at Arapaho, mm-hmm. and you said your parents kind of made you go out for the cross country team, and you didn't really want to, and everything. What made you go out? And then once you were out, because I can, I can imagine the first day you were out, you're probably like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? This is so hard. Yep. What was the thing inside of you that made you get through that? You know what I'm saying? To get over that, yeah. that hurdle there. Um, well, I think at first it was definitely my teammates. I had some really great teammates of all levels um, in high school. Um, and I think just seeing how much people loved the sport and how cool it was when people accomplished their goals. That was what made me want to keep going. Cause it was something that was very like running is a very individual sport, but it's also a very team oriented sport at the same time. Um, and I just think I like the idea that you could always get better and you could always tell when you were getting better because at the times will tell you if you're getting better or not, it's not like another sport where it's a little bit more subjective. Um, and I don't know, I, I just like chasing something, obviously, because of running. So I think that was what made me want to keep putting in that hard work. So something you, you mentioned was your teammates kind of helped you through that initial apprehension or anxiety of going out for the team and, and yeah. so forth. So my, I always say this, that uh, to find your purpose in life, it, when you find your purpose, it's usually because you have found something that's greater than yourself. Mm-hmm. Something that um, is, is greater than what you can even imagine. So when you talked about your teammates, I had imagined that you felt that if I quit this or I don't do this or I don't follow through on this, I'm not only letting myself down, but I'm letting someone else down. I'm letting teammates down. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, especially since... Um, pretty much all of my friends that I've had have come from cross country in some sort of way, even if they ended up quitting. Um, and I knew that my parents really liked coming to watch me run. And um, I really got along well with my coaches. And I just thought like, even if I'm not like the best, like I don't want them to think that I'm a quitter. And I know I'm not a quitter. <laughs> um, even when things got hard, I was like, there's always some way to push through. Um, and once I did start to get better, I knew that if I ever did quit, I would be letting people down because I like knew I was becoming an asset to a team in some way. That is so awesome. And your perspective on it is, is awesome about, um, what do you think about as your perspective on terms of how you got better and better and better at it? What think you, what, what inside you propelled you to all of a sudden just turn on this, this switch that said, I'm going to be the best I could possibly be at this sport? Um, One of the things that kind of just pushed me in that direction was that I was like, I have nothing to lose. Like, no one's going to be mad at me if I don't do well. I mean, people can get mad at you, but I have nothing to lose. Like, this is for me. Like, running is for, I can always run. Like, whatever happens, like, I'll always have running and yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a great perspective when you're talking about perspective about um, I'm just going to do the best I possibly can on this and I'm, I'm going to keep working as hard as I can. And that's what I want people to understand with your journey is that what were some of the the roadblocks per se in your journey from going from one of a hundred girls on your first team at Arapaho when you were a, a, a little freshman who didn't really want to go out to all, all the way to where you are now as a Colorado Mesa University Maverick um, <laughs> and winning awards in cross country. What were some of the hurdles that you had to go over during that time that really um, were kind of life-changing things that helped propel you to, to where you are now? Yeah. Um, so my freshman year, there was the shooting at Arapaho and that has still affected me a lot mentally um but thankfully with running like even though I can get stressed out by the competitiveness of running it allows me to have an escape from everything that I've gone through because of that um 
that was something that will always stick with me. Um, besides that, some of the other roadblocks I say would be like just be, being like the first person out of something, like being the alternate for a state team and not being the person who actually got to race. Um, I would think, oh, like I'm just not good enough. Um, like no matter what I do, like I'll always be the first person out of it. Um, sometimes I have like imposter syndrome being like, oh, like I don't deserve to be here. Like I'm like, why am I here? Like there's no reason like I'm supposed to be here. Like, especially when I think about where I started from, like being that super slow freshman, I'm like, this can't be happening. Like this isn't like, I must be dreaming, but I feel like I've learned along the way from having really great coaches that like, I do deserve to be here. Um, and the things that have happened to me in the past, they don't define me, um, but they help me out. Uh, they give me that perspective that there are always things that can be worse. Um, and that like life can be taken away from you any moment. <laughs> um, so like, why not do the th things that I love while I can? You're inspiring me right now. That's so cool. <laughs> I mean, the perspective of it could always be worse is so true. And I think most of us fall in a trap of we fall in the trap of feeling sorry for ourselves and it prevents us from getting to where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, that perspective that you're sharing there with people is going to help inspire people when you say it could always be worse. Yeah. And you've been kind of through some of the worst things when you're talking about a school shooting that you, that you were there. And um, I, I think the imposter syndrome is huge. I want you to know that most Americans or most people have imposter syndrome at some point in their life. That it's, makes me feel better. Uh, <laughs> Not the only one. But it's true. I've done some research on it. And getting over that is the hard part, right? That's the part that we have to fight through. And you've done such a good job of fighting through that. So one of the things that holds us back from our purpose in life is self-doubt or mm -hmm. the imposter syndrome, right? So what are some of the things that you've done to fight that self-doubt, to, to fight that imposter syndrome? I mean, you mentioned that you just thought to yourself, I do deserve to be here and blah, blah, blah. But there's probably something else that you have done to really fight that and get through it and overcome it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, part of that has been like just getting better in general. Like that doesn't help. Like that doesn't hurt <laughs> when you're trying to get rid of that imposter syndrome. But um, I like to just talk to my coaches before I have a race um, every single time. I'm sure I sound the exact same before every single race with like, so what should I do with, like during this race? Like what should my strategy be? But um, just talking to them and seeing how much they believe in me. Um, like I'm one of those people that likes to hear, um, words of affirmation from other people. Um, and I know that they wouldn't tell me things that they don't believe. Like they've seen the work that I do. And sometimes you need that outside perspective. Um, cause like, obviously like with imposter syndrome, like you'll tell yourself lies and like make up all these crazy scenarios in your head. Um, but my coaches have been really awesome in college, especially um, about telling me like, you can run the same times as all these other girls. You have the same mindset as, as these other girls that are doing these amazing things. Um, it's like, why can't that be you? Um, and once I kind of heard that phrase, I just started saying that to myself. Anytime I got to a really difficult part of a race and being like, well, why, why can't this be me? Like, I'm here with them. <laughs> like, it's so cool. Why isn't it time for me to just go out there and go kill it? <laughs> you're, you're, you're blowing this up. This is so awesome because <laughs> that is so true. When, you, when the imposter syndrome hits and that self-doubt hits, mm -hmm. you have a go-to to fight it off. And your go-to is, why not me? And, and everyone needs a go-to phrase or saying to fight off self-doubt and the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is helping people understand that. And, and the other thing I want you to realize that's so cool about what you've done to, if, to fight off self-doubt and imposter syndrome, which we all deal with, every single yeah. one of us, whether we're an athlete or not an athlete, we all deal with that. You said it, the hard work, okay? Mm -hmm. The hard work that you've put in, and you said how much, how hard you've worked through it, hard work is what gives you confidence. Mm -hmm. and, and helps you beat that imposter syndrome. And then the other thing that you answered that question I thought was so powerful was 
the importance of having good coaches mm -hmm. and having good leaders in your life that can lead you in the direction and, and get you into the direction and can push you beyond what you even thought you could do. Mm -hmm. um, I call it coaching, practicing, and challenging. And coaches that coach, coach the skill really good, and then they practice that skill with their players over and over and over, repetition, and then they challenge them on that skill to the point where they didn't think they could do it until they get to the point where they did more than what they thought they could do. And that's exactly what you just explained. I'm, I'm putting it in, in my terms. Yeah. You're backing me up on what I try to teach because <laughs> I think, I, I don't know what your, what are your plans next after, after CMU? What do you plan to do? Um, after CMU, I definitely want to continue running just for fun. I'm not, any professional by any means. Yeah. Um, but I also am planning on teaching high school. I want to teach high school English. <laughs> I just like my dad, I didn't think I was ever going to be a teacher like my dad, but <laughs> guess that's what I am yes. was meant to do. Um, right now I'm doing my observations and student teaching out at Fruita Monument High School. Um, and so that's what I plan to do. I don't know where I'll be yet, but um, I'm super excited to be a teacher and I hopefully want to coach too. Um, cause <laughs> I just want to be around my, running as much as I can. Yes. You have to coach because what you've learned, what you have learned as a athlete is going to translate over to your life, which will translate over to your athletes lives, which will translate over to their lives. And that's what I want you to understand the power of what you're doing and what you have. Um, I, I call it opportunity, right? So you're going to have an opportunity to go out and teach just like you're doing to people right now on doing this interview. You're going to have that opportunity to do that on a daily basis as a teacher and a coach. And what you've overcome in your journey to get where you're at is a story that no one can ever take away from you. It's your story and it's your story of how you worked so hard to overcome fear, overcome imposter syndrome and overcome self-doubt to get where you're at. And I just commend you on that. And it, it's, it's an amazing thing to, to listen to you talk. And it's so cool. Um, what do you have one more year left of, of running there at CMU? I, um, this is my senior year. Um, I technically have some eligibility left because of COVID. Um, I had never registered a season until COVID hit when outdoor was canceled this past spring. And technically we've all registered this cross country season. I, I can't really explain it. There's NCAA rules make no sense to me, <laughs> no matter how much I read them. But um, yeah, technically this is my last year. We'll see <laughs> what happens with that, but yeah. And you mentioned you were in uh, some kind of leadership program there at CMU with the athletic director or assistant athletic director. What is that you're doing? Yeah, so it's called SAC, S-A-A-C. It's Student Athlete Advisory Committee. And basically you just do a bunch of volunteer hours and community service and um, you're kind of the voice for your team um, for the rest of the school. Um, you have meetings every now and then with all the other athletes from their sports and um, the other and athletic director. Um, this is my first year doing it. Um, so it's been a little different, like our meetings are over Zoom <laughs> instead of being in person. Um, so I guess I haven't really gotten the full experience of it, but it's been really cool. Well, tell me what are some of the things that you guys have done, like um, community service and so forth? Um, so one of the things that my team did was we volunteered to go pick up trash in the desert because um, some freshmen were holding parties out there, which is really fun in the time of COVID to be doing that. Um, so we did that, and then me and a couple, me and a couple of the other um, um, leaders from my team, we had like a little mental health workshop with our teammates one day that was um, presented to us from SAC, um, and that was really cool just to um, have that kind of conversation with our teammates because something that's not really talked about that often, um, and I think it was really beneficial for all of us. <laughs> That's so cool. So I, I'm going to ask you kind of a tough question now. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but okay. What, what's your purpose in life? I would say <laughs> my purpose in life is just to be someone for people to, um, that they can always come and talk to no matter what they're going through. Um, 
I know that I've had a lot of people in my life that have been there for me when I've been going through some really tough things um, and they've changed my life. So if I can be that person to vent to, then like, I feel like that's the best I can do. Then I'm happy with that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And your perspective, what's your perspective on life going forward? You kind of mentioned some stuff a little bit earlier. And the greatest thing I think I heard you say was it could be, it could be a lot worse. What, what's mm -hmm. some, what are some perspective things that you think about as you walk through your daily life as an athlete and as a student and now as going to be as a teacher and a coach? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, um, it always could be worse, but also like life is really precious. Um, I've had a couple people in the last year that um, like part of my family that have passed away um, kind of unexpectedly and pretty young too. Um, and that's been really hard. Um, so I always think of them when I'm doing something that feels hard. I'm like, well, they were going through a lot of pain, but this pain kind of pain is nothing compared to what they were going through. Um, and yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, no, that's kind of perfect. what I That's perfect because again, we fall in that trap of feeling sorry for ourselves and you just told people, yeah, you can do that, but it's, it's a lot harder on somebody else when you're thinking about some of the people that you know that have gone through some tough times and so forth. It's, that's powerful. And the last one I'm going to ask you is, because this is my book, Finding mm -hmm. Your Purpose, Perspective, and Passion. What is your, what's your passion in life? What do you love to do? I would say if I could narrow it down to a few things, my biggest passions would be running, obviously. Um, I want to, obviously, teaching is a big passion of mine, even though I'm not a teacher yet. Um, just like getting to see kids learning is something that's really cool to me. Um, and then reading and writing, um, which ties in to being, wanting to be an English teacher. I have always been the kid that had like five books at a time that they were reading. Um, and just with writing, I can get out all my thoughts and it doesn't have to be perfect. So those are the few things that I would say are my big passions. And, and the cool thing about it is, is it's my, my goal and what I'm doing now as a retired teacher and I, I is to help people try to go to their passion every day. 70% mm -hmm. uh, of Americans are disengaged at work. And that just, it just hurts me deeply. <laughs> um, I used to say as a teacher and a coach, I went to my passion every day. There were some bad days there and stuff, but overall I never felt like I went to work. And that's yeah. what I want for others. And what, what really makes my heart warm for you right now is that's what you're going to be doing. You're setting yourself up for a life of passion, going to your passion every day. And I always say that purpose equals passion and passion equals purpose. Your purpose is serving others. I mean, you love to serve others and your passion is reading and writing. So your purpose and passion are, are matching up perfectly for what you're planning on doing for your life. And the amount of impact that you're going to have on, on kids and people is just a, amazing from you. what you've gone through and, and overcoming that adversity and doing those types of things. It's just, um, it's so cool to see. And then you talk about doing your um, community service that you're getting your team, you're a leader. So that's another piece of that you like to do is you like to lead people to good things. And that's a huge thing as, as well um, that I really look up to you for doing. Thank um, you so much. It's an amazing journey, Lindsay. I, it's, it's really an amazing journey from when I sit there and think about what you told me, told us, and you said, my parents made me go out for the cross country team. I didn't really want to, but they thought it would be good for me. And from that point on, look where that's taken you from that point to where you are now. How do you feel about that journey? I am very thankful that my parents <laughs> forced me into going into cross country. Um, I, I love them. They, they knew what was right for me, even though I didn't want to admit it back then. But um, the fact that they made me do that, then like it's changed my entire life. Like, I don't think I would be in the same spot that I'm, that I'm at right now. If I hadn't gone out for cross country that year. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I found out a little bit about you. I heard that you used to be kind of a little bit introverted and, and really, really shy. Is that yeah. true? Uh -huh. tell, us still... about, tell us about that journey through, through that to now where you're a leader and a leader for your team and on an advisory council at your school and, and doing all these great things. What is, 
what has given you the confidence and propelled you to do all that? Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I was a really, really shy kid. I mean, I had like a decent amount of friends that were also pretty shy like me. Um, some of them not so much, but once I started getting into running, um, I think because running gave me confidence when I would get better, that gave me the confidence to be more talkative and be more outgoing. Um, something, I don't know how that kind of correlated together, but it did. Um, and then I feel like as I got better, people started look, looking up to me more and being like, oh, well, like, um, like she wasn't so good, but now she's gotten better. So like, I can look up to her and ask her what she did, what, what she did. Um, to get to that point. And then just being in college, I was like, well, this is a whole new place. No one really knows who I am. Um, so like no one can make fun of me for anything or anything like that. Um, and I'm definitely more of a quiet leader. I'm not like a very loud, boisterous person. Um, I really like to lead by example. Um, and my coaches, especially the last year, really looked up to me as being a leader for the team. I'm one of the only seniors on the cross country team. Um, so kind of being pushed a little more into that position has really helped. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely less introverted than I used to be. <laughs> I'm much more likely to be outgoing now. Right. And that's, that's, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being shy and introverted. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong or anything. It's just uh, it, it, the journey that you've taken is amazing. Now, how many, how many girls, I'm just kind of interested in this. How many girls, when you started, as a freshman at CMU, how many girls started with you as freshmen and how many are still with you as a senior? So my recruiting class, there were, I think five of us, or maybe it was, one second, I mean, there were six of us. So I, had to, I had to remember, I think for a second. Um, there were six of us, one of them was a transfer, so she was a sophomore, but I kind of all count us together. And I am now the only one <laughs> still running. <laughs> which... Yeah, and I, I think that shows you um, your persistence and nothing against those people at all. You know, there's certain situations that happen to, to all of us that make us have to change things. But it shows another thing about you that is, is so great is your, your persistence and your power to overcome. Because um, I'm, I'm sure over those four years, there's probably been injuries and other setbacks that you've dealt with to get to this point where it could yeah. have been very easily you could have said you know I'm, I'm just kind of done with this I'm just going to finish school out what again what inside you made made you overcome all those obstacles that happened during your four years at CMU and maybe name some of those obstacles that you had to overcome yeah um one of the biggest ones that was kind of a turning point for me was um my freshman year at cmu it was um kind of at the end of outdoor track season um, i had just finished a race up at western which is a very difficult place to run yeah. at being at 7800 feet so maybe that's why i was also kind of upset but anyways <laughs> i had just finished a race and it was pretty bad not gonna lie um and I was not happy at all. And I just went on my cool down by myself and I had my phone with me and I called my mom and I just started sobbing and I was so upset. I was like, why am I even doing this? Like, I like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm just, not, I feel like I'm not getting better. And she was like, just take some time. Like you're still like, it hasn't been that long since your race happened. Like, just take some time. Um, like, don't make any decisions yet. Cause that's never a good idea. <laughs> um, and after I, after that, like I waited a few days and I thought about it and I was like, no, like I'm, I came here. Um, and one of the, one of the reasons, obviously not the only reason was I wanted to run. I'm not going to give up. I don't want people to think, oh, well, she only tried it for one year and couldn't do it. Um, and I was like, you, you come this far, like you knew freshman year was going to be rough. Like you can't just give up because you had a rough season. Like everyone has a rough season every now and then. Um, so after that, I trained my, <laughs> trained my butt off all summer, um, and it ended up paying off a lot. Like I learned a lot about myself as not just like a runner, but as a person, um, pushed myself harder than I think I ever have. Um, and then the next season, like I ended up like just dropping time really fast because I 
had done the hard work, which you talk about. <laughs> um, and ever since then, like I've kept that same mindset, like, yeah, like you're going to have those bad races and bad seasons. Um, but like that hard work is going to pay off eventually. God, that's so awesome. The hard work <laughs> is what propelled you again. And you just stuck to it because again, how, how easy would it have been to say I'm done? You know, Oh, I, so easy. I just don't want to do this. So easy. Well, you mentioned your parents. What kind of influence have they had on your life? They've had so much influence on me. I like I sometimes I can't even put into words like I'm very close to both of my parents. Um, I tell them everything, <laughs> maybe a little too much sometimes, but um, like they're some of my best friends um, and like they're not together anymore. But um, I know that they still put aside their differences to um, come support me which means a lot to me because I know a lot of people can't do that. Um, and they've never once failed to, if, even if they can't come watch me, like they're always texting me with support um, or just letting me vent out my feelings. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for them. Like I can't even, there's no words to describe how much they mean to me. That's so cool. I, I just, I'll wrap this up a little bit, but I, I can tell you um, doing this, interview with me about four different times when you're talking and telling your story I kind of got goosebumps all over the place it's, <laughs> I, it's, a, it's an amazing story and it's a cool story because there's so many times during the story that you could have quit that you could have given up that you could have said oh, I'm done I'm just gonna be a, a student and I'm gonna be the person that goes out to the desert and parties and not be the person that goes out to the desert and cleans up after the people that party you know, that's a big difference. There's a big difference between those type of people and, and what you did to overcome and, and overcome obstacles and hurdles. Like I always say that life is not a marathon. You know, you hear that saying all the time, life's a marathon. It's not mm -hmm. really a marathon. It's, it's a steeple chase. Isn't a steeple chase and track? I'm not a big track person. Yeah, it's, it's a track event. Long difference, long distance race with a bunch of hurdles and, and yeah it's a 3k race with a bunch of and you have water jumps too right and and that's what you that's what you're doing every day and you're overcoming those hurdles and you're overcoming those obstacles on a daily basis and what you're going to be able to give kids that you're going to teach and coach is just awesome and it, it makes me feel so good that we have someone like you getting into the profession that can help nourish and help kids do the same thing that you're doing because that's what we need in our world right now. And um, the leadership that you've shown, um, the, the obstacles that you've overcome and where you are now, tell just the last thing, where, what was the award that you just got? What was that? Oh, so it was, um, because I placed in the top 25 at this national invitational. Um, so I was like named um, the all invite team, all national invite team. Um, both me and my friend Kira got to be a part of that. I got the last spot on it. I somehow snuck right in there. <laughs> oh, cool. You, ne you never got the last spot. You got the spot. I got, I got the spot. <laughs> you earned the spot, right? That's what you earned. And, and again, to think from going from my parents made me go out for cross country. I didn't really want to go to getting that award and, and earning that award. What an amazing journey. And, and there's been some obstacles along the way that you've had to overcome. And I'm just so proud of you. I don't even, this is the first time you and I've ever met. I, you know, I love your dad and everything. And uh, it, was, it was so great teaching with your dad all those years. He's such a good guy. And I, and now I know why, you know, it sounds like your parents have had a major influence in your life and um, you're going to go out and you're going to inspire others to do great things just like you have. And I'm so excited for your, for your, um, your journey for the rest of the way. It's going to be really cool to see. Are you going to graduate then in May? Yeah, I'm supposed to graduate in May um, with my bachelor's degree. Okay, and then are you going to stay over there? Um, I, I might stay here. Um, I'll definitely apply for jobs out here, but I'll, I'll apply on the front range too. Just I'll see wherever it takes me. Okay, and one last thing before we go. Tell us a little bit so people understand about our school, CMU. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about CMU and what you like about it. I love CMU when so like when I first came to visit it um it was I think January of my senior year um and I at first I was like I I don't know I was a little apprehensive at first because the um Grand Valley is very different from the Front Range yeah um, 
doesn't really feel like Colorado. You yeah. feel like you're in Utah, which makes sense because you're only like 20 yeah. miles away. Um, but the campus is awesome. Um, I didn't really want to go to a huge school like Boulder, even though I love Boulder. Um, or I didn't really want to go to a small school either. I won like something in the middle, which is exactly what Mesa has. 12,000 people is perfect. You know enough people, but not everyone knows you at the same time. Um, and you also have really nice class sizes. Like I've never had a huge class. All my professors know my name um, and my professors are amazing. I've never had a TA teach me ever, um, which you can't really say for a lot of schools. Um, everything is so new um, and we actually just got our own track which is awesome we don't have to use the high school track or the city track anymore um, and it's such they we have like amazing facilities it's incredible um, and there's so much to do outside out here i love going up to the monument or the grand mesa um, like all the trails out here are incredible so i i'm so happy that i came out here i you know and i say the same thing i always used to tell people it's it's far enough to be away to, to mm -hmm. grow and grow and, and progress in your life, but it's close enough to get home if you need to and see yeah. your mom and dad and, and those kind of things. And the outdoor stuff there is beautiful. The, the scenery is beautiful. And now the facilities are world-class. I mean, it's, it blows me away. I took a tour last year, uh, the facilities, the athletic facilities, the new dorms, they just built a new hotel there. Um, yeah, I've stayed, I've stayed there with my mom, and it's so nice. Yeah, I have a, I have a lot of pride in that place, and it, it did, Colorado Mason University did a lot for me, um, and I, it sounds like it's done a lot for you, too, so. I'm really thankful for it. Yeah, I, you made my day. Um, this was, a, this was a, so cool, and I, I can't wait to uh, watch you on your next journey. I have some friends that teach at Fruita, so I'll be having them come contact you. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. So um, I will try to get this up on my website and hope people on your team and, and over there can see it a little bit. And, you know, I'm not a big time deal or anything yet. I'm just trying to help people progress and help people have a better life. And them listening to your story and listening to how you did things and overcame things and so forth is going to inspire and help others too. So I want you to know how much you are inspiring and, and motivating others to do some of the things that you've done and, and overcome. So I thank, thank you, you for so that. Much. You're such an awesome kid. It's, it's unbelievable. Thank and I'm you. so, so much. got to hold me to, to get a hold of this for, to, to do this. So thank you so much. Um, anything else you want to say or? I'm just, thank you so much for having me on here. Like this has been so cool. <laughs> thank fun. you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it. Thank you.